Hello eBayers, this is the eBay item for today. This Drummond three and a half inch metal turning lathe. Now apologies for the background noise, it's blowing a storm outside. Uh, I hope that's not too much of a distraction. Right, I have owned this lathe for about 17 or 18 years. This uh, is quite a dear piece of equipment to me. Uh, but I've not used it for the last few years because I have a much bigger lathe, and I mean a much bigger lathe. Uh, uh, my hobbies have moved on, and I'm now turning much bigger stuff than uh, than this machine will allow. Uh, having said that, for a model engineer or for um, someone who's keen into uh, doing odd jobs, uh, small mechanicing work, this is ideal. Uh, the lathe itself, rather astonishingly, is potentially up to a hundred years old might just be antique because this model of lathe was brought out by Drummond from 1912 and they carried this on until 1921 at which point it became the M-type Drummond which then became the M-type Myford when I think Myford were contracted to do the manufacturing and everyone knows the story of Myford lathes uh, all started uh, because of Drummond's wonderful design and there's, uh, if you have a look at the, uh, the later Myford M-Type, uh, you'll see it's very similar to this in uh, a lot of ways. Uh, anyway, uh, you don't want to hear that. You don't want the history lesson. You want to see this lovely machine. I should put lots of detailed photographs on, but as ever, you can't beat a good video. Um, now, we have some electricity coming down that wire. We have a nice switch here. There we go. Single phase, uh, running from a uh, 240 volt motor and uh, as you see running very nicely indeed uh, I shall do some cutting in a minute but just to show you some of the features and uh, just to give you a little bit of a, an overview this lathe has had quite a few modifications over its lifetime so let me explain there is no power feed to this lead screw there would have been uh, an arrangement here for um, change wheels for screw cutting and for actually driving that lead screw there would also have been a back gear arrangement here to allow even more spindle speeds. That's been removed. This has been added, uh, which is a really nice way of locking the spindle. You undo this here. I always, oh, that's right, I usually keep this well out because I didn't want this to engage whilst in operation. And um, that will interface into there. And that will give you indexing. It'll actually give you 60 places. I use that to do a clock dial once. Um, there we are, to mark the dial out, you can use it for um, indexing, obviously 60 is a good number for lots of derivation. So I'll just put that in there, that keeps it well out of the way. So that's what's uh, going on there. So you've only really got three speeds, you can just about get the fourth by tweaking this lot over using uh, a smaller diameter there. But the three is quite good actually, those three main speeds. A lovely brass plaque here, uh, and it's got the speeds on if my camera will hopefully pick that up, which is 280, 500 and 840 RPM. Not check them, I'm sure they're reasonably near. Um, quite an interesting bit of history, going back to that history lesson uh, on this lathe, it was actually one stage at the Great Western Railway Training College, or British Rail Western Region Training College, at Crewe. And as a consequence of that, we have I'm sure there's other markings on here, but certainly you can see on this uh, chuck here, BRW there, BRW again there. Um, also the fact that uh, the oiling points have got yellow paint to uh, show people to remember to oil them or grease them in this case. I actually used to use oil in these, these just unscrew. And I just used to feed oil through and then every so often pop some grease in there. Uh, now it's a used lathe, as we say, potentially up to 100 years old. Um, there is play forward and back on the nut there, you would expect that. Um, you, uh, you always go the one way and making sure this is back. Uh, I never found that a problem. Um, that's a common for all lathes. Little bit of play sideways, very little actually it's fair to say. Very little on the headstock bearings, I'm sure they're adjustable. Um, but that all feels tight and you can move the lead screw. Um, one way and the other, and uh, there doesn't seem to be a lot of discernible wear on the bed. It has a few little marks, uh, but generally it's not bad. Um, as I say, remember this is a, an old item, and 
British made quality. It, uh, I'm sure, has many years use left. The tailstock, uh, I believe this is Morse Taper 1. And the other point to note, this comes out a nice long way, which is good on the uh, tailstock. But it's just worth pointing out that this locking arrangement here, which has a pin into here, I suspect that that whole arrangement should be round with this upright and there should be a slot in that hole and this just locks the shaft I suspect because this actually works by using the slot from the end of this to both lock and locate which is fine but when you're going in and out you just need to loosen it off um, but not too much otherwise this whole unit rotates so that could be improved um, it's been fine for me I've never found it an issue you just learn that um, not to over tighten or over loosen that. Um, really nice feature coming back to the headstock is that this headstock actually can be altered uh, for taper turning. So you can actually undo this nut here, there's another nut under there to undo, and the whole thing twists round. Um, you can see the sort of uh, level of movement there for, for doing tapers, and this bell derangement will accommodate that. This is a modern belt, but it's uh, working very well. Um, just to point out on the saddle, there's a very old chip there that's been done at some point. Very nice four-way tool post being added though. And I've still got the spanner that came with it. It should be nicely made up to allow you to turn and lock off in any position, which is good. So very nice tool post, very nice uh, adaption that. But that has come at the expense of a cross slide, which I believe the machine would have had using these slots and sitting on here. So you've only got that wheel and this wheel, which isn't a problem because if you do want to turn a taper, you can at least angle the head. Uh, you can also offset the tailstock if need be. Uh, that's all settable, uh, which is quite nice there. And the tailstock glides nicely along the bed, thus and locks with that back lever. There is a number on there for the bed which says 3344. I presume that's a serial number for the lathe. I will need to do some research and look that up. Uh, but I shall put it if I find anything in the description. Comes with, this is a new ish chuck. Um, it's a TOS chuck. Nice chuck here. And very nice. You'll see hardly any wear on any of that. It's all looking good. And the reverse jaws are present and correct there, numbered, so you can go the uh, other way. This chuck screws onto this back plate, which also has the holes to allow the four jaw chuck to be bolted on. So to change chucks, you unbolt those three and then bolt this on. And this is a Bernard four jaw independent chuck, um, which has a chuck key, different chuck key, a chuck key to fit there and um, you've got that. There's also the original face plate which do a little bit of cleaning up uh, on that side uh, is ready to go. I've used that for a few jobs. It's quite good actually because you do have a quite a good gap here so you can put that on and do bigger work and, and this whole back plate unscrews for that. I'm fairly sure it's a one inch centre and it's a fairly standard thing for vintage lathes so I'm sure you could get more chucks to fit that uh, if not make up this back plate um, with different holes or make another back plate entirely I'm sure that's quite possible as I say they feel good those bearings um, don't seem to be any problems there and uh, same the lead screw feels nice to operate this is uh, mostly been used for aluminium and a little bit of woodwork uh, hobby purposes uh, so it's not done a lot of work whilst I've had it and I suspect at the training college it would have only have done demonstrations um, particularly given if it's for railways uh, the small lathe is going to be used to show principles the large lathe is going to be used for practice um, also comes with some cutters which are there so I just the in the shadow there we are some cutters which is nice and this very well made stand which is Obviously non-original, it's been made out of wood. Um, it's good tenon joints here, someone knew what they were doing when they made this stand. So that's nice and substantial, which is great. And I uh, should just point out for transport purposes, 
couple of bolts in here. You can take the lathe off and one bolt in place for the motor. Should be two, I can't find all the bolts. Um, it's easily fixed, but it does the job. And you can uh, take the motor off for transportation. So I'm sure it will fit in a car. The only one to worry about is the base. Uh, it should fit in an estate. I can give you the measurements if you so wish. Just coming back to the motor arrangement, you'll note it's pivoted on the base here, which allows the user to change the speeds. That could be rigged up for a form of clutch, uh, if you uh, so wished. You could imagine a lever arrangement down, or a handle that could be here, to allow you to um, have a hand control to effectively bring that forward to act as a clutch, um, potentially with a foot pedal, um, just a pen. Uh, it can be quite useful to have a clutch, so I was always going to do that, but then didn't, so that's a, that's a thought I had. Okay, let's turn her on. We can, uh, okay, I'll cross, cut on. Something like that. Just show that cut in a bit more detail. Let's go the other way for this one. Lots of small. So there we go, folks. On circa 1912 to 1921, later Type B, three and a half inch centre height Drummond metal turning lathe. If you have been, thank you very much for watching, and keep them bids coming. <laughs>